series now um, about being still, about learning, if we can, I guess it's a skill, learning to be able to quiet our minds, quiet our brains, um, switch ourselves off maybe from the world for a bit and switch ourselves on to Jesus and learning to be still in his presence and it's tough we know it's really difficult to do but um i think it's worthwhile trying anyway trying to develop some kind of regular practice of being still um i'm going to read from mark chapter one first this morning um and this is this is uh jesus and his disciples and um they've just left a synagogue and they've gone to the home of um, Simon and Simon's mother-in-law is Pauline and she's in bed with a fever and Jesus goes in and he heals her. Um, and then the, the passage said that evening after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick and demon possessed. The whole town gathered at the door and Jesus healed many who had various diseases. He also drove out many demons, but he wouldn't let the demons speak because they knew who he was. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Simon and his companions went to look for him and when they found him, they exclaimed, everyone is looking for you. Jesus replied, let's go somewhere else to the nearby villages so that I can preach there also. That is why I have come. So he travelled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. Now, I don't know about you, but sometimes uh, my experience is that um, you've had a really super busy day and you arrive at the end of the day and you are absolutely frazzled um, and you're, you're knackered. And, um, and But actually, in a weird way, you, you don't know what you've achieved. You seem to have been on the go all day long, but you can't look at anything and see what you've achieved. And... I think if I was Jesus living Jesus's life, maybe I would have felt like that. But but it doesn't seem to be that he had that. He had experiences like that that would maybe produce that feeling of frazzled, um, produce that feeling of just being, you know, beyond it with all the expectations on you. Um, frequently in that passage that I've just read, the, the phrase that stands out to me more than anything else in there is where it says the whole town was at the door. The whole town wanted a piece of Jesus. The whole town wanted Jesus to heal them. The whole town was interested in what Jesus had to say. The whole town wanted to see what this phenomenon of Jesus was. And, and, and you get to the situation, maybe sometimes you feel like that, maybe, you know, the whole town is at your door, maybe your whole family is depending on you for something, or your boss is depending on you for something, or and all these things happen all at the same time, and, and it feels like the whole town is at your door. And so the question is, when it feels like the whole town is at your door, who do you choose? How do you prioritise? How do you make the decisions about who you're going to be there for? And maybe who you're not going to be there for. It's a really difficult decision to make. I know when my kids were little, they're grown up now, but when my kids were little, sometimes I would just go and have a bath. And the main reason I would just go and have a bath is because once I was in the bath, it didn't matter how many times they yelled, Mum, can you find me this? Or I can't do this, or I need your help with this, or or whatever whatever it was that was on their minds at the time. I was in the bath, and, and once I was in the bath, I actually wasn't available to them. I was kind of available just to myself. What I do know is that me getting in the bath from time to time and not being available as mum or as the fixer of everything meant that actually when I got out of the bath, I was a better mum. To be the best Jesus, which sounds daft because Jesus was the best Jesus, but but almost to be, if you if you understand that daft analogy, to be the best Jesus that Jesus needed to be, sometimes he needed time alone. And if Jesus needed time alone in a solitary place, in the quiet, then for goodness sake, we certainly need it, don't we? To be the best people that we can be, to be the people that Jesus designed us to be. 
we need time alone too. And also we know, you know, as another building block in the background of this, if we're going to build a relationship with Jesus, then we need to spend time on that relationship. And that relationship, I guess, has to be more than a list of our demands or a list of our requests, um, which Jesus wants to hear. But I don't think that's all that Jesus necessarily wants to hear. I think there is more in that relationship than, that he offers us, if only we'd stop and listen and take time occasionally to build that relationship with him and also in terms of this feeling frazzled and in terms of this having all these pressing priorities on our lives which most of us have all of the time and having to choose sometimes what to do and what not to do how did jesus do that because the reality is in this even in this little passage He's gone to Simon's house, he's healed Simon's mother, word has got around and the whole town is at his door and he's healed many more people. But then really early the next morning, he's gone off by himself to this solitary place. When the disciples have caught up with him, they're saying to him, you've got to come back. <laughs> you know, you didn't actually get through the whole town last night. There are still many, many, many more people here that need a touch from you, that want to see you, that want healing from you. You know, you need to come back to Simon's. Um, we're waiting for you there. And Jesus says, actually, no, that's not what I'm here to do now. I'm going on to other villages because there are other people that need to hear from me and there are other people that need a touch from me. And Jesus makes that decision to leave some people behind that probably were in just as much need as the people that had managed to get there on day one. But he makes that decision because he's prioritised his time and he knows that what he needs to do is to go to town too and to talk to people in town too. He knew what his priorities were because first of all, he had prioritised his time with God. So how do we do this then? How do we build time into our day to day lives? Um, that enable us to be able to practice being still. I think the first thing is maybe we need to get rid of some stuff that gets in the way of our priority of spending time with God. Maybe we may need to put that first. Maybe we need to understand with our brains that if we get that first, then the rest of our lives likely will have more order about them. Sometimes it's prioritising or sometimes it's getting rid of self-inflicted stuff that we've touched on lots and lots of times before. But sometimes maybe maybe we determine that actually we're not going to look at social media until lunchtime every day because then we can prioritise our time with God first. Or maybe it's not that. Maybe it's not, you know, something as trivial as social media. Maybe maybe it's. Uh, maybe it's deciding that three days a week or two days a week or even one day a week actually it's okay to give the kids pizza for tea because that means that the time that I would have to spend my precious time that I would have to spend you know putting something together for dinner that might take half an hour could be well spent one day a week chucking a pizza in the oven and using that half an hour to be still with God if that's the only time we've got or maybe we're gonna get to the end of our days and realise that actually it wasn't so important to spend all that time polishing and hoovering. And that actually that time would have been better spent prioritising time with God. I think the second thing that is really important for us to do is to not beat ourselves up on this based upon our own personalities. Now, I know that there will be some people who are really comfortable spending time on their own in their own company. And there are some people that have naturally meditative personalities who find it really easy to sit in silence and to not think about nothing, but to ponder one thing without minds jumping around like butterflies. And if that's you, that's brilliant. Praise God for the personality that he's given you that actually makes this 
kind of easy because the develop, development of a deeper relationship with God, I'm sure, comes from it. But if that's not the personality that you've got, and if you'd rather be in the company of people and actually being on your own is challenging for you, or even if it's not being on your own that's challenging, but actually it's that stopping your mind from flitting from one thing to another. Maybe you're an amazing multitasker, so concentrating on one thing at a time is really difficult for you. Acknowledge that this is going to be easier for some people than others. Because God made you the way you are with the personality that you have. And so it's okay, he understands and he will work anyway. And then the final thing to do, I guess, is once we've got to that place and we've prioritised the time that we are going to spend with Jesus, the thing to do then is to ask Jesus for his vision for you. Ask Jesus what his plans are for you. Ask Jesus what his priorities are for you. And that could be anything. But if we take the time to ask Jesus what his priorities for us are, then again, it's going to help us to shape our lives. It's going to help us to prioritise our time. It's going to help us when we're making choices as to whether to say yes or whether to say no to things that crop up. Jesus doesn't want us going around frazzled the whole time. He really doesn't. He wants us to spend time in rest. There's no medals for working 70 hours a day every day or even 70 hours a week every week. There's no medal for that. Jesus spent time resting. He spent time in quiet. He spent time in solitude and he wants us to do the same. So let's see whether or not we can prioritise that over the next couple of weeks. Hope you have a great week. God bless.